It's DJ Holiday and Ebony, a.k.a. The Averys. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. Dinner with the Averys, episode 26. Fresh off, of course, that live uh, show that we did, man. Shout out to everybody who came out and participated, bought a hard ticket, and let us know that we are officially popping out here in these streets. Uh, yes. And we had an awesome, awesome show, man. So shout out to uh, B. Simone who came, of course, everybody who's in the front kicking and having a great time. But most importantly, our beautiful uh, guest that came, uh, Scrappy and Bambi. So shout out to them, of course, yes. one more time. But this is the official Christian special, and I am your host, DJ Holiday. How y'all doing out there? <laughs> Yes, and with me and, as always, he has, he has a special guest with him. I yes. am his wife, the one that Ebony. jingles my bells every day. <laughs> uh, your bells or your oh. either or. Oh, okay. Anyway, how you doing today? You good? I'm good. How you doing? Ebony, come on, man. How, how you do- are you doing? I'm good. I'm wonderful. Yes, good. man. Christmas okay. time, holiday season, fa la 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 la, and all that shit. What's up? Are you excited? Or it's the holiday season. It's my favorite time. Hmm. Yeah. No? Hmm? <laughs> I guess. We have a lot to be thankful for. And we're no, I'm, I'm definitely. Well, then you better act like it, girl. Anyway, no, I'm definitely excited about the things that have happened um, over the last couple of months. and yes. Jesus Christ answered our prayers. Yes, definitely. Um, And I, I really honestly can say I don't even want. Anything for Christmas this year. That's a lie. Anyway. I don't want anything for Christmas. Now, what you choose to give me is what you choose to give I'm me. Sure. But yeah. normally I would say, hey, I want. I never really ask for nothing. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> You're so spoiled. Anyway, man. Do I ask for stuff? No, baby. You don't ask for nothing. But Unless like a baby. I really, really want it. Brian doesn't ask for anything either, but she, you know, she knows she's going to get something. No, I ask for And if she doesn't, she's going to pout. No, so. I just only want money always. So. All right. Anyway, what do you want for Christmas this year? Since we, you know, talking about Christmas. Oh, I'm not really. A, I don't really. Look at that. I, you know what? I let y'all surprise me with the gifts that y'all give me because I know it's like super hard to shop for me or whatever. So when you're being creative, it's always cool. So, mm. but just don't be like my grandma and buy me no big ass. <laughs> No extra, extra Tommy large Hill figure t-shirt. shirt. Extra, 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 and extra man, large. Every time, <laughs> grandma. Was, I love my grandma to death, but she gives me the the goofiest gifts sometimes. But she get the kids the best oh, yeah. gifts. She, she gets the best and look, clothes. Why old people? Every time they get your kids a gift, they always be like, "Well, you know, I went to Macy's for that one." <laughs> So, no, nah, who else did that for you? I thought so. <laughs> they went to Burlington, okay? So, they always try to outdo each other and stuff like that. So, But, nevertheless, the kids always get what they want. And the tree is looking beautiful at the house, uh-huh. by the way. Of course. Congratulations you know. to uh, wifey uh, always. I think she just need to decorate trees in, uh, in the you mall know or what? something like that. I need to be decorate a trees and wrap gifts. Because mm-hmm. I do it like perfect. They usually right? let the Make a Wish Foundation kids do it. But you do it way better than them. <laughs> you do. You're great I at it. I can't stand you. You're sometimes. great at it, son. Anyway, next year I'm going to let you do the tree. And we'll no. see how the tree turns out. You know what out. I get fussed about? If I start even uh, doing the tree, <laughs> like I don't fluff the shit right. No, you don't fluff the tree right. You don't line the lights right. You don't line the garland. He just throw it up there all quick, not even caring how it go, how that's, it's going up there. That's why like you gotta get, put it on there, then step back and look at it and see how it looks, and then go back and fix it and step back, look at it. You just throw it on there and it's done. That's like, why I get the it. fluff up out of there. <laughs> that's it. Nevertheless, I love holidays. I love Christmas. I love uh, New Year's. Of course, it gives you a chance to, you know, revise, restart. You know. Get back out there and do something. You know, if you had a good 18, you know, we I had a great 18. Actually, uh, I think I celebrated my, my anniversary in style. I had a cool birthday. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I feel like God really put me through a situation where he showed me that he is real because I had nobody else to complain to <laughs> other than my wife maybe uh, about how I felt. And I couldn't throw money at this problem. Uh, it was a process that I had to wait for. And as I'm speaking about the house. Uh, and we, we, like I said, it came finally right on time, right before the holidays, which is so cool, man, that we got, you know, the tree, the house is all nice, warm, and 
The house is all nice, warm, and cozy, and the trees are under the tree. You know, the kids got their own room now. They got a playroom right across from my room, and me and Ebony can close the door and be adults. And it's fun, <laughs> man. It's, everything's good now. Anyway, moral of the story is, guys, I'm going to say this. Never take anything for granted, you know, because you can take something for granted, and it can be gone just like that. You know, just like, like we. That end up moving out of our old house thinking, hey, this is going to be an easy process. We're going to find something better. You know, we're going to find something quick. Quick. <laughs> and then that wasn't the case. Like, Nigga. we went through maybe four different houses, four different closings. Closings. To get to Earnest money. closing point to where we decided, I mean, not even decided, where something happened to where we had to end up uh stopping the closing so just never take anything for granted because this taught us definitely <laughs> to be grateful for what we have because like i said it can all so be gone you gotta understand just like this live show uh parties it birthed all that like we was basically like just not living in our own house. It was crazy. Mm -mm. So yeah, the process we, we was definitely wild. could tell a, a story about Man. what we've been through over the last couple of if months. You know me, know me. You caught a glimpse of my truck, of her car. You, you <laughs> we know, was our, living our out of our car. We had bags That's what it looked like. Our oh, trunks bad. was full. But we got closets now. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> enough with that. But thank you, God. I appreciate you, and thank you for everybody. Like I said, for you know helping us. Uh huh. Helping us, motivating us, and all that <laughs> shit like that. All right. Anyway, Merry Christmas to everybody out there. What are you most excited about for Christmas? You know, every every Christmas, I'm always excited about the kids. Like, just the excitement of them opening their gifts and actually seeing what Santa brought them and things like that. I, that's what I'm super happy about. And you know, also, when you have kids, guys, uh, Christmas time is the best time to discipline them the best. Oh, my gosh. Like she you messes up when he messes Santa up. Oh, Santa is going to take the gifts. He ain't, he ain't coming. <laughs> and they go ape. They go nuts. Oh, yeah. I've been making Ryan go to sleep early because um, I tell her if she doesn't go to sleep early, then Santa can't come at nighttime and bring you gifts. So every night we put out a certain number of gifts. And um, if she doesn't go to sleep early, we don't put the gifts under the tree. So she thinks it's because she stayed up too late. She didn't get any new gifts from Santa. So mm. that's how I've been getting her to go to bed early. But and um, on this topic, what do you how you feel about some people were saying they don't feel like they should their kids should believe in Santa because basically you're mm. giving Santa all the credit for the hard work that you're doing. I'm not. No, I'm not. I don't I don't believe in that. That's like, you know, I'm not going to take that joy away from my kids like. I was raised in a household where, you know, to think and imagination and wonder and all right. that stuff like that. So I'm not taking that away from them. I'm not uh, I'm not taking that, that, that situation from them because that's that's pretty dope, man, to think that somebody's coming to bring you presents and all that stuff. And I remember right. me and my sister when we were kids, like, it was the funnest thing ever, man. Wake up and peek out the room mm -hmm. and eat make bake cookies the night before and stuff like that. So that's that's just being and a kid. It's a good way that if you didn't get everything she wanted, you just blame, blame it, on it on Santa. Blame it on an old white man. Just blame it on Santa. He <laughs> did it. He forgot. <laughs> <Pretty> <laughs> But nah, man, let's get to these topics, baby. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, this first story came across, uh, you know, right in time for, you know, gift giving and things of that nature. So uh, John Gray is a pastor. Mm -hmm. Pastor super, super John church, Gray. Super church. Mega so again, church. Super money. Mega church. Mega church. Mm -hmm. Has a big following. Um, He gifted his wife for their anniversary with the Lamborghini truck, which I think are the most horrible trucks, by the way. Anyway, uh, yeah, so... Two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Of course, the kind of congregation they felt some type of way. You they, know they, what? They, they suspect their money's going into that truck. It wasn't the congregation that felt well, a certain Ebony's, type of way. Hold on, I'm, I'm no, going to tell you why big she is hold, on tidy. Wait, hold on, go I'm going. Let me say my part because I'm a little. This she is a little go hard. touchy subject to me because I hate when people do this. Like, first of all, stop counting other people's pockets. First, second of all. Being a pastor is actually a job, whether some people know it or not. You still get paid to be a pastor. Yes, people do tithe in church, and some pastors do take that tithing money and use it for something else. But I get in it is 
a job. He does get paid to do it. Also, this man has books. This man has a TV show. This man has, he does speaking engagements and different type of, uh, like, he gets booked to do things. And you know what I'm saying? So what he said was not a dime of that church money went towards purchasing his wife that truck. And the reason why he bought her that truck is because she was, they were at a car show one day and he told her, she told him that would be his dream, her dream car to have that truck because it's the fastest truck in the world or something like that. Yeah. So she was like, oh my God, that'll be a dream to me if I was to ever get that car. And he went ahead and made it happen because that was his wife of however many years. That was their anniversary. Mm -hmm. And he felt like after all the things that she's been through with him and he felt like she deserved it. So cool. I feel like but in regards know how to tithing is. in regards to tithing, yes. I feel like you pay your tithes according to what the Bible says. What the pastor and whoever else in the church chooses to do with your tithing money is up to them and God. What you did with your money, you did the right thing. So all you got to do is worry about what you did, you and God. But that's between you and God. That's like you gift, did what what you were supposed to do. Like gifting a, a bum, <laughs> you don't know if he's gonna pay to do something good with the money or, or go he's get gonna some go drugs smoke or crap. Mm-hmm. So, but in the end of the but day, but you did the place. right thing, right? And I that's get that part. that's what people people just need to stop worrying about other people. I get that part, just but right, like I said, business. that's the whole <laughs> formula of church. I feel like. You know, everybody's not all the way lit in church. No, not, believe it or not, a lot of people good. a lot of people think that way, though. Like, I'm just giving my pastor money for him to go buy him a big house and nice cars and this and that. Well, what do you think and, is going to happen? He serves a purpose. He's feeding right. the, the minds of y'all to get y'all motivated to believe in God like you're supposed to. And you catch the word from him on Sunday. Right. So you don't, you don't think he's going to... I mean, not take care of itself. You don't want your pastor broke. Right. I mean, be, you, that's gonna... supposed to be like, uh, not even, I'm not going to necessarily say a leader, but a leader, honestly. He's a leader. It's somebody that you look up to with, he's telling you, like, you don't want somebody that's a bum on the street, like you're saying, telling you, oh, God is going to give you all the riches of the world and all this type of stuff according to him. And if you I'm looking at him mistaken, and he ain't got none of it. You G- know what I'm saying? If I'm not mistaken, Jesus turned wine and water into <laughs> wine. And he could heal and turn, you know, he had un- unlimited bread for everybody. And he was doing all type of crazy fly stuff. So, <laughs> I mean. I'm just saying I would rather somebody tell me, preach me the gospel that actually looks like something that's he that he's preaching to me. So the moral you know story saying? is uh, mind your damn business. Exactly. And, and, and his wife and, deserved that truck. Met, yeah, she deserved a truck. <laughs> like, I'm going to speak on behalf but of that. Like, church stop is, worried about church what is, husbands buy wives. Church, church, is, sure. church, is, church is chatty <laughs> and gossipy, and everybody's yeah. always want to know who's doing what and what she wearing and all that stuff. But so. it's crazy because a lot of people feel that way about giving tithes in church. Like, a lot of people don't. <laughs> a lot of my friends is. Travis is over here acting goofy. With his kid and play here. What in the world was that? <laughs> Next topic, uh, this is the goofiest (laughs) argument of all life, and it's bringing out every old motherfucker who ever had a hit record in R&B. The king of R&B, my good friend Jacquees, announced himself as the king of (laughs) R&B for his generation, which is, I guess, everybody who's 16 to 21 right now. He ain't no 21. 16. Yeah, 25, 18 to 25. Whatever. He's a young nigga. I know all my nieces and nephews love this nigga. So, okay. Do y'all agree? I don't. I, I definitely don't. Like, I mean, come on, dude. Baby, you like, love tripping. I love tripping better than, better than she did it. But you can't just get on somebody else's beat and, and and make that huge and think because of that like you the king like you where your albums yeah, and your, record up. where your albums and all that type of stuff and you know what i'm saying how are you the king i'm a big believer in confidence and i well, feel yeah, like you I gotta feel like believe it but if i say i'm the two to six don or i'm the mixtape king i know drama is great but i feel like I'm, my shit was fly too and i'm the commission guy whatever you know you got to claim that high position of what you're what you're doing for a living. Like our podcast is the shit. And it might be not be the best podcast, but I think our podcast is the best 
uh, relationship podcast, mm-hmm. you know, and people will catch up and see that. But like I said, uh, but yeah, I, I'm not going to give him the title of king of R&B. He now he can have he it. Can't he can announce it. King. He can say it a hundred times, but he got to keep showing and proving. So maybe if he keeps motivating himself, he'll put out more hits, but not having... Because he just showed up maybe, what, two years ago. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, where are your albums and your number ones and and all that type of stuff? Like, you can't be – you can't. It's just – and I still feel like even though Chris Brown is – I mean, I feel like he's for our generation. Generation, Chris Brown, Brown Trey Trey Songz, like, all those people can say – I'm the king, and and I mean, you know, for our generation, they can say those things. I and really Chris think has yet Chris to say Brown, anything. right? I really so think knows. Chris Brown is the one that should say it out of everybody. Honestly, that's yeah. my personal. But here come all these old niggas. <laughs> here come, here come the Bobby V's. He's too old. That's not our generation. Yeah, I he, mean, uh, it's our generation, but it's not the generation Jacquees was but saying. Here come the Bobby Usher. V's and the uh, uh, nigga who from Cisco, Drew Hills. And, <laughs> Uh, I mean, everybody I mean, came out of the woodwork. Pleasure uh, P. Pleasure P. Everybody now talk, came out of the woodwork. Pleasure was hard. It, 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 yeah. Keith sweat his ass to all of them, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I mean, all of them have. They put out fake flies for tours and shit. <laughs> Tank. Uh, Tank. What yeah. the hell? Tank. R. Kelly, I'm sorry. Tank, your ass like, ain't never been in my top five. Who is your top five? <laughs> Who your top five R and B baby? R and B men? What you mean for this generation? No, or just nigga, period? top five R and B right now. Uh, R. Kelly, Chris Brown. Let me see. Top five. Um, we doing old and new. Top five. Michael Jackson is still in the R and B. Uh, let me see. That was what three. Um, um. This shouldn't be hard, baby. You it is. R&B. I I can't. I love R and B music too. Top I can't five. Think of it. You got three. I'll come back to you. Okay, go ahead. Michael Jackson. Mm hmm. First and foremost, Prince. Mm-hmm. Don't ever forget it. Prince, R. Yeah. Kelly. Yeah, R. Kelly, definitely. Chris Brown, because, mm-hmm. you know, Chris Brown is Chris Brown. Okay? Mm-hmm. And y'all, y'all ready for my last one? You gotta be. That four. was four. Come on, man. And Usher. Usher's, yeah. Usher's That's a it. Good one. That's it. And everybody else fits in How they for, fit for, in. for mm-hmm. giving me a good song or two or three. So I give I, honorable mentions. I have Trey songs. I have a, I mean, Pretty Ricky did some shit to me. I like them mm-hmm. niggas. They did great. <laughs> I I like H Town. I like. Uh, oh yeah, Silk. I like nigga. Why would I not like, give one twelve? Drew of a Hill, Jagged Edge. You know, it's. I mean, you could go but on and on and on. But top five king of R and B, it gotta go to Mike and Prince and R Kelly and Usher and, and those guys, man. And then yeah, take it back to my grandma. My grandma top five. Eh? <laughs> You know, <laughs> or Osley Brothers, Marvin I mean, Gaye. It's, I mean, it's, it's all tight. Yeah, it's, it's too. It, it's too. It's too wide open. But you yeah. know, to each his own. Uh, I think y'all. You know, it's funny how y'all took that to a whole another level. That shit just been going for the last three weeks on Instagram, straight up. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. crazy. Every week, somebody new come out. Well, and this is the Christmas special, so I remember I asked you this at the house. What's your top three Christmas? What's your top three Christmas movies, babe? Um, Home Alone was one. Um, The Grinch was another, and that was the the cartoon Grinch. And um, I didn't have three. I only had two. Pick one more. I don't have another one. I don't like no more. Home Alone two. Home, the Home Alones period were all I like. Well, what, what are you watching on Christmas Eve? Wrapping gifts, chilling. I don't watch, you know, I don't watch TV. Oh my God. I'm going to be man. listening to Christmas music, but I'm not going to be watching what am I gonna Christmas movies. You're definitely going to be watching movies. Okay, cool. Son. All day, all night. Like, that's all you ever do. My favorite Christmas movie <laughs> is. <laughs> what is it, man? National Lampoon. That's my shit. Mm-hmm. Forever. You, that's, the favorite, that's the best Christmas movie ever. Home Alone is also a yes. classic forever. I love it. Always. Um And you might not know this was a Christmas movie. But you gotta switch it up sometimes. Die Hard. That's a Christmas movie. Oh my mom, it's a Christmas movie. It's in the top ten Christmas movies of all time. It's a Christmas movie. You Googled movie. that before you came. Swear to God. No, I know. <laughs> so that. you can be different because that ain't what you told me last night. No, I what? You told me Christmas Carol and no, other Christmas stuff. Story. Yeah, Christmas Story. That's a classic with the the, the leg. You with didn't the lamp. say that just now. But I I thought about it on the mm-hmm. way over here. Mm-hmm. You Google. I don't Google nothing about <laughs> no movies. You know that. Right. 
But yeah, I definitely won't be watching movies. I'll just be listening to music with some wine and some candles and you know all that eggnog. type of stuff. I don't like eggnog. Well, That's only that. you. You don't only want to like it. Okay, only cool. you. Me and my granddad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all good. All right. Moving next to the next topic. Uh. You know, I guess we are rooting for him. Nobody wants to see this happen, but right. I honestly think it's a, a promotional stunt it's offset. I'm sorry. You know, your album, I'm sure it's going to be great, but, you know, you got a couple of weeks. You ain't got a week. You got a couple of days, actually. A week? When it's supposed to drop. But honestly, if this was a publicity stunt for him, it's not really working in his favor Hell because nah. they're not on his side right now. Let me tell you something. I ain't on his side either. And I say Cardi don't take him back because you will say that. he cheated. And if he didn't care enough, y'all are married. If he did not care enough to value those vows that y'all gave and, and that baby that y'all got and he risked all that, man, don't take him back. I don't care. What, how, don't he care. got caught cheating? Mm -hmm. I don't know what he did. I bet you don't remember all that. I don't remember. <laughs> I never followed the story into that part. Mm hmm And the girl Summer Bunny he cheated with, supposedly cheated with, Summer came Bunny. out. Yeah, came out. She looks like she a black special. China. That's what she looks like. She looks like black China. But um she came out and did this whole Instagram thing with fake crocodile te tears and stuff. I don't know the girl. I'm not going, you know, I just don't I feel like probably pay her a nice little chick. Well, I, no, they sorry. were supposed to pay her to be quiet about the situation, supposedly. But like I don't Trump. know if she took the money. I don't know how all that went down. But she came out and said something like, oh, I didn't know the marriage was that serious. Start crying and all that. And, oh, I'm sorry. And Come on. You didn't know the marriage was that serious. So what? Do people get married for play, play now? Or, like, I mean, I don't understand that. I feel like if a girl going to go and cheat with a, a married man, she don't get no sympathy either. So you on there doing all that crying and stuff. You knew the man was married. Everybody and their mama and daddy and grandma and grandma, I mean, and granddaddy knew they was married. So mm. for you to go lay down with a married man, that's like, what type of respect do you have for yourself? And I'm like, if you listening, Summer Bunny, you can be mad all you want. But that's just, come on, man. He was married and you knew it. That's crazy. Well, uh <laughs> I'm not going to be that mean. At the end of the day, I think it's just pretty much easy uh, to just give up. So I'm not going to have the typical black person answer and say, oh, yeah, whatever. Don't take them back, girl. Don't do that. Because if you was in the same situation, nobody wants to go through that breaking up a happy home and all that type of stuff like that. So, you know, that's what it is. I mean, did you think about that when you cheated, though? No, but you okay. said if you cheated. Right, that's what I'm saying. But you said nobody wants to go through the breaking up a happy home. You're breaking up a happy home when you cheat. Okay, Ebony, so, so are you going to accept all the responsibility if you cheated on me? Like, Yes. You know I'll get 110 the kids. 110%. No, you won't. You don't know that. What? That's what I'm saying. You work too much. So it could be all type of fights and all type of things that could happen. No, Ebony. It's cheaper to... You cheated. Remember that now. If you cheated, EJ, you would lose the kids. That will be my rightful thing to say in court or whatever. We were fighting over custody. So you got to think about that type of stuff. Like, you ready to go down that line or talk about it? So if I cheated, I would lose the kids. If you cheated, you would lose the kids? Or what, what are you saying? I'm, I'm sure, trying to yeah, understand what I'm you're saying. I'm just saying, the person who's at fault to make the relationship not work, they're going to be pretty much the person uh, that everybody's going to point the finger at and be like, oh, this ain't going to work. Or whatever like that. So they're going to be like, oh, well, you know, maybe he should get the kids because he didn't do nothing wrong. He just goes to work and does his job and take care of the kids. She want to go out and cheat. Get it? I guess. Yeah. You got to think about that. Nobody wants that. You don't so want you that. you should think about that before you cheat. Well, not you think about that before you, you cheat. Not saying you. I'm talking about in general. Exactly. That's why people tend to work things out. It's only public when you put it out there in the streets for everybody to know. Yo, he's strong as heck. <laughs> like, <laughs> for him to just open that door like that. <laughs> he finna knock on the door and say, Dad, Dad. Right, he's strong. All right, let's get into this food, man.
All right, the food is here, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're talking about. Yes, time yes. to eat. It's festive time, and yes. uh, we have the Honorable Chef John here cooking us some what up, what up? wonderful food for the Christmas special. What up, bro? What's going on, brother? I miss this part of the show. We miss this part, right? It's been man, a while, right? I think I done lost weight and stuff because <laughs> I ain't been eating like this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, my it's god! It's been a minute. Yeah, this it's... is so good. What do you have for us today? Um, tonight uh, I went a little. Um, you know, it's like family. You know, generally the Aries is like family. So, um, I did like a family meal. Um, I did some uh, some brown wild rice. I made some oxtails, some smothered fried chicken, collard greens, and I made a sweet potato hash with some apples with some roasted apples. I know you just like you just gave me my plate. Yeah. And it's probably about to be all gone in like two minutes. That's like this is is so good. That's looks like it. Come on, it's kind of the point. <laughs> really? She looks uh, hungry. Uh, I can't stand you. This is really good though. Thank you. And by the way, you don't eat oxtail cute. Well, I can't. I don't. You know, good. Why I pick? Uh, uh, I pick all my food because I have to see what I'm eating. <laughs> he said oxtails. <laughs> so look, we have someone. What 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 do you say you are? Caribbean, I mean, He's of Jamaican, Jamaican and Trin- Trinidadian. He says that we're not supposed to say oxtails as plural form. It's supposed to just be oxtail. So if y'all hear this and you are Caribbean and you know what the proper thing to say, I want y'all to tell us on our Instagram or whatever. What do you say? Do you say oxtail or oxtails? Because I'm looking at a plate of multiple pieces of oxtails. But he's saying you're just supposed to say oxtail. So I I want to know what y'all, I want to know the proper way to say it. Because I'm going to still say oxtails. We need to know <laughs> if it's if it's oxtail or oxtails. Right. I, okay. What is it, babe? Uh, I don't know. What do you say? Oxtails. <laughs> <laughs> did I do that right? <laughs> oxtails. I would say that's right. I love oxtails <laughs> from Island Cafe. Facts. There it is. Get my plate, dude. Get your hungry ass out of here. You ain't made your own <laughs> Give chicken. me your carrot. You I don't will even not want give it. you my carrot. Moving on. You're, that's stingy, boy. You put stingy. See, see what you just said? I'm oh, stingy. I, can I enjoy my food first? You don't even you want it. You literally killed your whole plate, and I haven't touched mine. <laughs> You're it. grabbing my plate. You don't even want it. No, Murder. don't do that my ass shit to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's up, bro? What you got what's planned for the on, holidays? Man. Um... I'll be at home, man. You know, spend some time with my family. Man, we just gonna have a good time at the crib. You not cooking for nobody for? I'm cooking Christmas for a couple Day? people. For a couple I don't think people. Christmas Christmas I don't think Christmas meals are like as big as they used to be. Nah, they're you not. You remember how like you know how Thanksgiving is? Yeah. I think everybody be so tired from Thanksgiving, nobody goes hard for Christmas. Nah. Like, I wanna really like just cook ribs or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, we might do something different this year. Like I'm thinking about um smoking some uh some like pork butts or something like that. Pork butts. Yeah, or some <laughs> smoked chicken. Pork outside. butts. Mm. Mm. Never. So does how does that look? Are does you smoking that look anybody like... else's butt? Oh. No. Okay. All right. I mean, a couple episodes back, I. Oh my god. You may have mentioned. I may have mentioned somebody. Oh, <sighs> so next subject. Um, pork butts. Back to what to I was happy, saying. Bro. So. <laughs> Does a pork butt look like a, a butt? No, it doesn't. It actually looks like, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, pork butt. Y'all don't like, laugh. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, like, have you ever had a pulled pork sandwich? Mm-hmm. That's what it's like. I mean, oh, it, okay. it falls okay. apart like that. It just cool. doesn't look like a butt. What's up with everybody? Yeah, we are. <laughs> 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 What's going on? Shit. Yeah, damn, we shit. <laughs> we've been gone too long. We're trying to get back long. in the groove. Man, we've been gone too long. Well, yeah, man, so that's awesome. Yeah, man. Just a just a good little Christmas Some little good old pork butt. Yeah, man. All right, well, cool. Thank you, man, yeah. so much for coming through. Absolutely, it was good man. to see you, man. Happy you holidays too, man. to you. Yeah, man. What, Thank what's, you. Like, what, what's on your Christmas list? Um, I got some. I, I want a new knife. I, want a new I was about knife. to say he probably wants some knives want and some stuff like that. Shit. Yeah, some chef shit. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I mean, you blinding everybody right now, so no. that's something like that. Something like that on my list. But <laughs> early Christmas gift. Yeah, that's all good. Mm. Um, all right. Yeah, man, chilling. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, bro. Absolutely. Happy holidays thank to you. Happy Same New to you. Year. Yeah, man. And let's go even harder for 2019, Facts. bro. Facts. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So, <laughs> since this is a special episode, our Christmas episode, we aren't really going to do the game time and stuff right now. Um, We're just going to go straight into fan mail. 
Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I personally have one question. Um, someone DM me and asked me, being married, how do you guys deal with which family, um, which house you go to for the holidays? So pretty much, um, like, I guess she's saying, like, do you go to, how do you choose? Do you go to your family's house or do you go to my family's house? How do you decide which house you go to for the holidays? Uh, You do three hours at one, three hours at the other. I agree. Either that or one year you do his family and then one year you do her family. Uh, whoever has the best food. <laughs> <laughs> True facts. Oh, and there you go. Big there are three facts. different Big ways to handle it. <laughs> All right, this is from uh, one of our beautiful fans in Milwaukee. Um, what What's the worst Christmas gift you ever got? I guess he's asking us that, so. Um, my worst Christmas gift? Dang, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't remember. Oh, I don't think I've ever got any, like, really, really bad Christmas gifts. Mm. So, technically, I don't really have a, a worst Christmas gift. I don't know. What about you? My grandmother. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I love her. Bless her heart. My grandmother gave me, uh, um, she had like, you know, I was the first person I knew that had like a, a credit card, kind of a Macy's credit card, whatever. So I made her go to Macy's and um, I showed her to the velour sweatsuit that I wanted because I wanted to wear it to a basketball game. And she went back and got it, and then she got the wrong one. And it was like an off-brand, no-name shit, and I had <laughs> to wear it. I had to. And I felt so bad, and I got Joan. And I guess that was kind of the worst Christmas gift, but I never told her that. I still wore it, so. So that was your worst Christmas gift? Yeah, it was the worst. It, was, it hurt my heart to wear it, but I had to. My mom made me wear it. <laughs> she was asking, like, send me a picture in it. She spent the hard earned money. It was it was messed up, but Jeff I still John, wore it. Do you remember your worst Christmas gift? Um, I got some skis. I'm like, <laughs> when the fuck am I ever gonna go skiing? Oh wow. <laughs> skis? Skis on a snow bunny. <laughs> oh god. Mm -mm -mm. I got some skis. When I was like twelve, I was like, I don't I don't So that was you were supposed to go skiing I was supposed, at some was that point in time. To, Cause yeah. it was a stone mountain, bro. <laughs> Yeah, you should have went outside when it snowed and, and skied down the slope in your backyard or something. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Listen, man, thank y'all so for the uh thank y'all so much for the um, support and love. Of course, uh it's the holiday season, so we will see you guys for the new year and we will start fresh and have some big shows lined up. Yes. So we're very excited. Um everybody's always talking about the podcast now. It's kinda crazy and surreal that uh, you know, we started this little thing twenty six ep episodes ago. And to this point where people come up to me and be like, When y'all gonna have me on the show? So it's crazy. So um, and even doing the live show, that showed us so much uh, love and um motivation right. to do Thank more shows. Thank y'all again for showing yeah. up and showing out for that show. <laughs> Like it was a huge success. And I want to give a, a big shout out to DJ Envy because I'm not gonna lie to you. He he motivate he didn't motivate me, but he he basically pushed me to a level like, yo, you know how you base if your podcast is doing good with your wife, you do a live show. So doing that uh, and us actually doing it and selling out was crazy. So we're definitely right. excited for more. And uh, and of course, like I said, the live show, man, was such motivation and um and for us to go harder, man. We want to thank our sponsors again, of course. Yes, yeah. thank y'all so much because without y'all, the show wouldn't have been as big as it was as well. Um, so thank you to Feli, thank you to Nice Scent Co, AT and T, Ciroc, U Bar, um, Commission DJs, Risky Lashes, Big Al's Buttermade Burgers, and um, shout out to No Free Looks for doing our shirts for us. Dazzle Me Parties, oh my God, you guys were amazing. If you need an event, guys, Dazzle Me Parties will hook y'all up. They will transform their space for whatever you need. So I'm so grateful for that. Shout out to Kendrick um, for doing our custom shot glasses and custom wine glasses and drink glasses for the men. Um, they were so bomb. But And thank you again to Bambi and Scrappy. Like, Bambi and Scrappy. Our thank y'all so much. Thank y'all for coming out and helping us make the show a success. And thank you for all of our Dinner with the Avery staff. Like Because of y'all, y'all like, the bomb. All of us pulled together and made this 
a huge success. So thank y'all all so much. And we're going to keep going harder and harder at 19, I promise you. And um, thank y'all so much again, man. Y'all have a wonderful holiday season. Enjoy your family and friends. It's so important. And, um, yeah, man. <laughs> Keep, Merry Christmas. Keep, keep rocking on. Yeah. Happy New Year. All that. All ooh, that. Ooh, we ooh, gone. Ooh. <laughs>